All right, my friends, let's see how it went for you. Um, so the first thing we need to do is find the equation of the line where the two planes intersect. And to do that, there, there's a number of ways to do it, okay? Um, for this problem, it kind of makes sense just the way it looks to eliminate the y's, just if they're already opposites, it's just asking me to. So I'm just going to do row 1 plus row 2, and I'd get 2x minus 7z equals 8. And a uh, funny story, this is the equation of the line in 3D space in terms of x and z. Um, and so to uh, finish this problem out, there are so many different ways to do it. Um, one way is to just, you know, pick a variable, x or z, and it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just going to pick x and I'm just isolate it. So in this case, I would add the 7z over and then divide both sides by 2. Sorry, my 2s and z's look a lot alike. The z's are the ones with the line storm. Anyway, um, and so now you have, a, hopefully, it, maybe if it wasn't so obvious up here that that was a line in 3D space, hopefully now that it looks a little bit more kind of like that y equals mx plus b format that we're used to in two dimensions, except this time it's an x equals mz plus plus b <laughs> uh, format. But hopefully now you can see that this is this is basically the equation of the line where the two um, planes intersect. So here I'll just kind of draw a picture. Um, this picture doesn't make a ton of sense because it has three planes. Um, so, um, but if you could ignore maybe that purple one, you know, ignore that purple plane. <laughs> Pretend that's not there. Uh, then this line right here that you can see that goes along the intersection of the gray and the blue planes, um, that, you know, this is what we just found the equation of. Okay, so our answer is basically something that is saying this. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions um, and you always want to basically define where the solutions are. And so the, the, so the infinitely many solutions um, are basically any point um, that lies on the line, so that, that lie on the line x equals 7 halves z plus 4, okay? But that's not how we're going to write it because the truth is, is that that sentence does not make the most sense. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to write our um, answer in the form of an ordered triple, okay? And so we're going to have something for x something for y, and something for z, okay? And simply because of how we ended up doing this particular problem, we're on track to get everything in terms of z, okay? And here's why. We already know a formula for x in terms of z. x can be calculated by taking your z-coordinate, multiplying it by 7 halves, and adding 4. So since we already have x in terms of z, and it's easy to get z in terms of z, um, z is just z, then all we'd have to do is get a formula for y in terms of z. And to do that, you could go back up to either equation, row 1 or row 2, back in the original problem. I personally like row 1 for this. And replace as much as you can with, uh, with formulas in terms of z. So for starters, x is equal to 7 halves z plus 4. y is what we're solving for, and then z is just z, and then the whole thing is equal to 8. And then just solve for y, and you'll have a formula for that in terms of z. So let's see, 7 halves z plus z would be 9 halves z plus 4 equals 8, oops, plus, sorry, plus y, and let's subtract that 4 over, so we'll just have 4. And then uh, subtract 9 have z. There we go. Okay. And then, so this is an ordered triple written in terms of one of the variables, okay? 
So the way we're actually going to write our answer is not like this, even though that is essentially what we're trying to say. So we're going to say, therefore, there are infinitely many solutions of the form. And then you just copy this little ordered triple that you have. 7 halves z plus 4 goes in for x. 4 minus 9 halves z is the formula to get your y coordinate. And we're getting this whole thing in terms of z, so you just put z in the z coordinate spot. And then we'd want to have that for all z values from the set of the real numbers in order to calculate all of the ordered triples. Okay? All right, this is not the only way your answer could look. Your textbook has a tendency to do what's called introducing a parameter. So in this case, they would like let z equal c or something, some like letter that's somewhat independent of eight x, y, or z. And then they would seriously write this exact uh, formula, but they would write 7 halves c plus 4, 4 minus 9 halves c and c. Uh, for all C from the real number system. So it's the exact same thing that I'm writing. They just introduce this kind of like free variable or independent variable, okay? Um, it doesn't matter to me if you want to do that or if you want to just write this in terms of Z, okay? All right. Um, there are other ways your answer could look as well. Um, you could have, for example, back up here, if you had chosen to um, solve for z instead, um, then you would have had z in terms of x. And so you could have written your an final answer in terms of x instead, and it would have looked quite different. So there are different ways your, your answers could look for those. Hopefully that makes sense.